most traditional tech roles will not exist in probably two, three, four years, maybe even sooner. So AI has been taking the world by storm. It's not a new thing, especially for those people who work in technology uh, and have been dealing with AI products. AI has sort of been around for a while, but in a very infancy stage. Right now, it's really just become mainstream, and especially in the last couple of years, with tools such as ChatGPT sort of booming. And then there's lots of more companies now using it more and more and more. So we're going to talk about in this video what are the top trends, top technologies around the AI space. AI is not going anywhere, so you need to get on top of it. You need to start using it. Otherwise, you may be left behind. Hey, my name is Emilio. I love tech. This is a YouTube channel all about tech and I would love it if you click on that subscription button, click on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Now, before we do get into that, you need to be able to know your network, map your network, understand all the bits and pieces. And sometimes it's really hard just to sort of get a good high level overview of what is what. This is why I love a product called Fathom. You know, sometimes when you need to install monitoring apps and scanning apps on computers, you need to go and install an agent on every single device. And that can be really, really frustrating. Fathom is completely agentless application discovery and dependency mapping. It is great. Essentially it just scans your entire network and builds a nice map of your entire network so you know exactly what is what. A full discovery of your hybrid IT infrastructure, mapping all of your servers, your hypervisors, your hyperscalers, understanding your network. Fatim will give you a view of your clustered servers by business applications so that I can see exactly what is installed and where and how they all connect together. You'll be able to see what is what so you can manage that change even better. Understand where the root cause of some problems may be, assist with migrations, assist with your disaster recovery and your business continuity plans, compliance, cybersecurity, and more. Now, being a big AI advocate, I love what's happening in AI. Future versions will also come equipped with AI, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. Now, here's the best thing is that it's really, really fairly priced, and they even offer a free forever plan down below of this video description. I've got a link to it, so go and pick it up right now. You wanna become a better sysadmin? Give Fathom a shot. Now, I work in technology, and I know that my role has been affected significantly because of AI. When ChatGPT became like a huge thing, everybody started going, what is this thing where I can give it a prompt and it'll give me something back? And it was like amazing. Essentially acting a little bit like their personal assistant, all right? Doing stuff for them, not having to go out to the interwebs and search for hours for your information. So these um, technologies that I'm gonna be talking about in this video are the ones that I have sort of been seeing in the industry that have been growing significantly. Now, the first one I'm gonna talk about here is ChatGPT. What most people are familiar with, of course, is the free version. Free one gives you some really cool stuff, but then if you go into the enterprise, there are actually paid versions of ChatGPT that will give you a lot more information. I like the fact that the paid versions of ChatGPT actually allow me to put a little bit more guardrails uh, around my product because a lot of people are scared, especially in companies, around sticking their data into a AI system that they have no idea what that system is using their data for. Access controls in place, so only certain staff are allowed in, and then you can really control things a lot better. Now, of course, you're only as good as the prompts that you are giving the AI machines. Uh, and this is something that I've learned over time. Some people are better than others, and a lot of it comes back to the prompts that you are giving. So the more you're using it, the better prompts, the more specific the prompts are, like the stuff that you're asking it. Don't just say, do this for me. Actually say, do this with this and this, considering this, this and this. And it'll give you some pretty incredible results. Now you may ask yourself, why can't I just use the free chat GPT? It'll do a fine job. And look, it does. It has access to a really good AI that can help with a whole range of tasks. However, the paid version, like for example, chat GPT plus, you've got enterprise, you've got teams, depending on the version that you want gets a whole lot better with a whole bunch of additional key advantages, including some of the most powerful models that have been released by OpenAI, which essentially means you're gonna get better responses, faster performance, and you'll also get priority access to their bells and whistles, so you won't experience any delays during those busy times. Now for an added bonus, you can also play around with the OpenAI API integration features. 
OpenAI, essentially the company that makes ChatGPT. So if you're interested in integrating ChatGPT into your own apps, which is really cool to actually connect to all of your applications to ChatGPT and use the capabilities of ChatGPT to enhance your user experience, your automated tasks, and even provide AI powered customer service. If you're familiar with Microsoft 365, you've got Office, you've got Teams, you've got SharePoint, you've got OneDrive, all of that jazz, you then switch the AI machine on and that is called Copilot. And what Copilot lets you do is it's fully embedded within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Paid licenses, but now it's fully integrated into your SharePoint, into your Teams, into your Outlook. Gives you all the prompts because it knows all the history about you. Every interaction that you've had, like there's some data that you know that you worked on at some point. Was it on my email? Was it on my OneDrive? Was it on SharePoint? Uh, like, how did I get this information? Well, ask it. And because it knows everything about you, it'll retrieve that information. And it's brilliant when it comes to just asking information around company stuff, uh, maybe employees. What is this employee doing? Do I have upcoming calendar reminders? I'm looking for this thing. Help me draft up a new document based on this information that I had before. And he does a really, really awesome job. You know what I love to use Copilot for is on the way to work as I'm driving in, I'll open up my Copilot machine. Rather than reading all of the emails that have happened overnight, Copilot, give me a summary in dot point form of every single email that I've received in the last 24 hours. And it will go ahead and it'll do it. It's really cool. You've also got the Copilot Studio, which adds that extra, extra layer where you can now take agentic AI and start automating a lot of things. And this is where the next tool comes into place, which I think it's super, super cool. And this one is called Crew AI. Completely open source, and it's allowing you, your tech, all your teams to deploy multiple collaborating AI agents. And this is the future where in the olden days, you just gave it prompts and it gave you something back. But now the agents, it's where you're now interconnecting AIs together. You can tell the agent to do this, and it won't just give you the response, it'll go and do the response, right? So let's say I need to go and build my new app. I can say, hey, I'm trying to uh, build a new app. Tell me how to do it. And what it would do is it would spit out the code for you. And then it'll say, then go and download this and then download this and compile this and then do all of this stuff. And then, you know, it gives you all the steps. Well, now the new agentic generation, it's gonna go and do it for you. It's like super cool. And this is why, where this tool comes into play really, really well. You can actually give the agents themselves a specific role. So it's really, really great for tech teams. So for example, you're a network engineer, you can say, hey, AI, become a network engineer. Hey, AI, become a security analyst. And you'll start to think and act in that fashion. So then the agent then goes and plans it. He goes and reasons and then takes actions completely on its own, independently, hands off, completely hands off. So you can actually set up an agent, for example, a systems security type of agent, and you're giving it its, the task to go and just scan and monitor for vulnerabilities, for weird behavior on a network. Another one, hey, I need to do some patching. I need to get compliant in a specific technology. It'll go and develop a full patching plan. And not just that, it'll then put a system in place to actually go and patch all your infrastructure for you based on certain parameters. It's amazing. And the one that I love, because I'm a, I'm a uh, IT manager of sorts, I need my team to send me reports. Every single month, I ask my team, send me a report of what you've done this last month, because then I have to go and compile the report to then go send to all the big wigs. That's essentially what I have to do. Couldn't you automate all of that? And the answer is yes. You're, you know, if you're using the tool, give me a summarized monthly report on all of these things. And it'll generate, it'll make it really, really well formatted in a really nice way that your IT manager, your boss will see it and go, wow, this is incredible. This is my number four. It's one called Replit. Uh, if you haven't heard of Replit, you gotta get on to Replit. It is the bomb. It's so, so good. It used to be a very heavily uh, developer-focused tool. But now you don't have to be a developer to start using it. But really what this has been uh, positioned at is a tool to go and build apps for you. Go and actually build the thing for you. Again, not just give you the prompts, but actually go and do it. 
So, like seriously, go and build the app. So some of the key functionalities, it can actually go and auto complete code for you. Lots and lots of languages go and generate it automatically. Debug scripts, you can go and translate some of the logic between your PowerShell, your Python, your Bash, and actually translate. It's on the scripting technology that you're trying to use. And this is the bit that I love, is that you can then go and deploy that thing into a hosting environment. So let's say, I mean, think of this. I could go and say, build me a website that is about this, this, and this. Create all the code, it'll interpret all the code. You wake up in the morning, your website is live. It's amazing. My view here is that most traditional tech roles as of right now will not exist in probably two, three, four years, maybe even sooner, because those traditional roles are gonna get replaced by tools such as Replit and other AI tools. So the people that are gonna do better in their work are the people who are using these tools. They're actually using the tools to code better, to code smarter, using these tools to be able to automate the patching, the scripting, the monitoring of their entire tech fleet. Like it's it's incredible. I mean, this is a space that you gotta watch very, very closely because uh, you could be a developer, but in the next year, you could be a 10 times better developer because you're using a tool that, that essentially makes you 10 times smarter, right? Like you don't need to just go and build a VM anymore, manually, go and build a new virtual machine. This can go and script it all for you and build it for you. Like the amount of automation, the amount of time that you can get back when you're using a tool like this is incredible. And then the last tool that I'm gonna talk about here Again, these are not in any specific order. I think they've all got their pros and cons. This one's called Zapier. And this is just a framework that just really helps with all things automation. Talking, uh, allowing you to talk from this app to this app to this app to this app. Also essentially creating connectors, creating APIs, connecting you know data pipelines where you can transfer data between all of these platforms, throw AI in the mix, and then everything is sort of interconnected together. It's got connections for 6,000 plus apps. like. Most apps that you're probably gonna be using as a tech of some sort, even your online cloud platforms, your, you know, your Gmail, your Microsoft 365, all of those sort of things, it can have connectors into all of these. And you can connect things and move data between one system and another, and then throw the AI into the mix. Like here's an example of the way that I may use Replit, is the ability for ChatGPT, so this is where I'm pairing ChatGPT to some of my other tools, I want a prompt to ChatGPT to go and find me what are five of the top trending tech topics right now that I can talk about. Go onto the YouTube machine, making sure that all the prompts are correct and let me know what folks are looking for. Then write me the script and give me the key talking points. And then go and format it in a way that it's in a nice document and email it to me at this specific time every single week. And Zapier, joins all the dots together, uses its own smart AI behind it, and there you go, every email, every week is right there. Are there other AI technologies that maybe you are using that I could take advantage of, others that are watching could also check out as well. Do the subscription thing, really appreciate it as well. Click on the bell so you don't miss out on anything, and we'll see you on the next video.